Hi and welcome to this video. I'm going to take a look at Unity and its ray tracing capability. I'm going to show you how to turn it on and some of the stuff you can play around with to make your games look awesome. So it's a very high level overview of what ray tracing actually is. Ray tracing is a rendering technique for generating an image and by tracing the path of light as pixels in an image plane you can simulate the effects it has on virtual objects. So you may be surprised to know that ray tracing actually goes back as far as the 16th century. So traditionally ray tracing hasn't been available for real-time applications. It's only due to recent developments in hardware acceleration we're able to get this working in real-time and on games. Normally it's just reserved for things like film and television, VFX shots, where you can send your images or your animations up to one sound, have all the calculations done, and you'll see the back. Well with that round over, let's have a look at what we've got here. So in my scene, you can see I've set up my moon base. Uh, and these are assets that I actually sell online on the Unity Asset Store. So you, if you want, you can go ahead and, and check those out. I, as always, I do charge a little bit of money for these ones um, because I need that Lambo. And uh, I've set up a very simple scene here with just a, a quick terrain. Uh, just drop some models around just so we can have a look at getting ray tracing working. So number one, what's the first thing we have to do? So this is, this is in the HDRP. And I'm using Unity 2020.1.14. No, one. God damn it. Unity 2020.1.14 F1. And at the moment, it's just using default HDRP settings. Nothing special going on. So how do we activate ray tracing? First of all, we need to bring up a, a wizard that's going to help us fix or set up Unity ready for us to use ray tracing. So to get that up, we're going to go to Window, Render Pipeline. HD Render Pipeline Wizard. And then you're going to get this box here. Uh, and this is probably going to be on HDRP. And this is the default settings. Uh, and green is good and red is bad. Um, so we've got all green here on a HDRP as we, that we're currently in. So no worries there. If you wanted to do HDRP and VR, we'd select this, but we don't. And uh, we want the one on the end, HDRP plus DXR. This is going to set Unity up for ray tracing. And then you can see bad so what we're going to do is fix all there's this cool awesome button i love buttons where you just click it and it fixes all your problems in unity not in life so what we'll do we'll click fix all and we'll wait for unity to do its magic then you might get a warning asking you to create or load the dxr hd default scene uh we're gonna go ahead and say create one and you might get prompted to restart the editor just accept it and cross your fingers then once Unity is restarted, you'll um, be presented with your HD Render Pipeline Wizard again. And fingers crossed, it should be green across the board and ready to go. If not, you might have um, one red tick and um, just say fix all next to that. And what's it doing now? It's refreshing the database. So we'll let it do that and then we'll go on to the next stage. So the first ray tracing feature that we're going to look to turn on is the global illumination. So I'm going to go to my sky and fog volume and on here it comprises a vision environment which is made up of a physically based sky mm. and I've also got the physically based sky component just beneath. So to add the global illumination we're going to click on add override and start typing global illumination. It's going to pop up here uh, and as you can see you've got the box ready to be toggled for the ray tracing so we're going to turn that on but you also need to turn on this box next to it and instantly you'll see the scene update. And you see it's got brighter over here, but it's also really noisy. Uh, and we can control things like the noise in the global illumination, illumination drop down by clicking on denoise and activated to get in the box there. Now by default, this is gonna be at quite a high quality and the quality is gonna be driven by what sort of performance you need to get. But you can control the performance by looking at the mode and going from quality to performance. Uh, and then you can um, change a couple more things like use a half resolution denoiser uh, and by activating some of these you're going to get better performance but now it's using global illumination you can see the difference here when we toggle it on and off i just go boom boom you can see it's really making those dark areas look like they're getting some bounce light but currently this is, looks a bit weird on the moon because um my physically based skybox uh, has got this weird ground color and i can change that this will be different for your situation but um, on the ground tint, I can go ahead and select that and make it like a grey, like so. And we're going to get a much better, more realistic result for what I'm going for on the moon here. See when I turn it off and on there, really uh, bringing that 
bounce lighting in. The ray trace global illumination. <laughs> I'm just really struggling with that word. Global illumination. So that's really cool. That's our first ray traced component. Next up, we're going to have a look at ambient occlusion. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that down, go to add override and start typing ambient occlusion. So to en enable ray trace ambient occlusion, it's as simple as ticking the boxes. Ray tracing here preview, also tick this box as well. And you can see um, it starts to pop in just around the edges and then we can adjust things like the intensity. See it really coming in around the object of this mesh here. It's looking cool. Uh, and then again, we can if, we're getting, if you're getting noise in any of these areas where the ambient occlusion is being ray traced, we can use the denoiser and that'll take some of that away too. Next up, let's have a look at ray trace shadows. Um, so to enable ray trace shadows, we're going to have to go to our light. Uh, and now I've got a direct light here in my scene, but it's got this shadow component on it. And it, it's already enabled, so I'm getting my shadows. You can see when I turn it off and on, shadows are going to disappear. But currently it's not, um, not creating any ray trace shadows. So turn that on, we're going to click on screen space shadows, and then ray trace shadows preview. Uh, not a lot will probably be noticeable, depending on your scene. Let's go look, to look at some of these smaller objects. You can see a difference there when I toggle it off and on, just how more accurate those shadows start to look. And again, you've got all the functions for denoiser as well. So the shadows were nice and easy. So now we've got ray traced global illumination in our scene. We've got ray traced ambient occlusion, and we've also got the ray traced shadows coming in as well. Next up, let's go and have a look at some reflections. So back on our volume, I'm doing this all on my sky and fog volume, but you can put this on any volume you want to. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to add in the screen spaced reflection. I'm going to enable it. And then underneath, toggle the ray tracing preview. And again, this might be hard to see in my scene. I've got another scene to show you the reflections in a second, which might, um, might make things a little bit more obvious. Um, you can just see it is working its magic on some of the objects that are more shiny in my scene. And again, you've got features there. If you're getting any noise, you've got the denoise and the denoise radius, along with the mode, quality, and performance. I want all the puff. I want all the quality. So I'm going to high res everything. So the next ray tracing feature I want to show you is the recursive rendering. And to do that, I'm going to jump into another scene. So this scene currently has two types of reflection going on. We have our ray traced reflections over here, which is using the screen space reflection on um, this volume uh, and you can see if I turn it off it will just disappear and look a bit strange um, but these are the ray trace screen space reflections and then over on this side we have the um, recursive reflections now the recursive uh, selects it here the recursive rendering here is basically a replace replacement pipeline in the high definition render pipeline for rendering meshes and what happens is the meshes that ha have a material that are marked as ray tracing are going to send out rays in their scene for reflection and refraction. Reflection? Refraction and refraction. Uh, but what happens is when that ray hits an object, it doesn't terminate, it will carry on going. Um, so it, it's constantly, rays are constantly moving through the scene and you're able to get these really detailed reflections. These meshes sending out rays. Uh, and rather than hitting something and stopping, it's going to hit something and then carry on going, um, which is going to make the reflections here look really realistic. You can see the difference over here. And the biggest thing you'll notice if you're struggling to see is that in the reflection here in this sphere, this sphere is this one here, this reflection, you can see me move it. But what I should see is the reflection of this sphere in this sphere in this sphere that's kind of like some weird inception but you'll see what I mean so if I move it around we should be able to see the reflection of, 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 of itself back uh, but if we go over here are we using the recursive mode you can see what I mean here you've got the reflection of this ball in this ball so then as I move it around um, it's a much more detailed and accurate reflection and that's working across all these items that are marked um, for ray tracing. When I say they're marked for ray tracing, when you add in the recursive rendering 
it doesn't it won't actually do anything unless a mesh has been marked a mesh's material has been marked for, as ray traced so on any object that we want to use recursive rendering for you have to select it go down to its material properties and on the rendering pass change it from default which is this is a default you can see the change there the default to ray tracing so any object with this material is going to be using the recursive rendering pass now you could use the screen space reflection for this too which will kind of get you quite close so the screen space reflection has a bounce count which you can turn on uh, and once you increase it to like two or four you can see i've gone up to four there uh, i start to get those reflections um, of the other objects inside the other objects but you'll notice it's not as clean there's a little bit of a delay there uh, and it doesn't look as nice and sharp as a recursive rendering method see that is pin sharp and it's fast too and not as noisy I'm not sure if you can hear that on the mic but that was my PC I think this ray tracing is going to make it catch fire so it literally is that easy to enable ray tracing in Unity. Just go into your window, render pipeline, HD render pipeline wizard, whacking it on HDRP plus DXR and fixing all the things, and then using volumes to add your ray trace components to. So that's the end of this video. I really hope you found it useful and learned something from it. If you did, it would be great if you wouldn't mind leaving a like on the video and possibly even considering considering consider a subscription if you're not already subscribed. More videos coming soon. See you then.